OK, let's bring in to the studio Liberal Senator for South Australia, Alex Antic. Good to speak to you in the flesh, Alex. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. First up, do you agree that Jacinta Nambajimpa Price is the front runner, is the person the coalition needs running the no campaign? Well, it won't surprise you, Chris. So I don't seek to tell Peter how to do his job, of course. Um, but as, as it stands, on a, on a character reference basis, I can't speak more highly of Jacinta than, than, than you have. I mean, really, she is an absolutely outstanding candidate. Uh, she will do an incredible job prosecuting this case or the no case, as she already has done. Uh, and, you know, it's a bit like a football analogy. Sometimes you've got to get your best player uh, on the ground. And uh, I, I, think she can, uh, I think she can win this case for us. But there are Liberal backbenchers like yourself and many colleagues who know there's a Liberal spot vacant in Shadow Cabinet. They would like that spot. Do you think it would create a lot of dissension in the ranks? Look, I, I think she's very highly regarded. I think people understand, as you said in your intro, the, the importance of winning this debate. Uh, and I think people would understand that. Look, politics is a game of, uh, of ego and ambition. Uh, and it would be very uh, unusual if people didn't have some uh, nose out of joint out of that. But, look, I, I have to say, um, I'm sure there are ways and means to do this. I'm sure there are, and I'm sure that can be arranged. All right. Well, you're a senator for the Liberals. I want to show you again that clip from your Senate leader, Simon Birmingham. Have a look. Will you campaign for a no vote? Well, it's equally not my intention. My intention is to respect the Australian people uh, who will go about this referendum uh, uh, applying their judgment uh, to the issues that are before them at the time. Alex, is that tenable for the Senate opposition leader to pick and choose which policies he wants to advocate? Well, look, uh, Chris, I, I do think uh, this, is, this is troubling uh, from where I sit. I, we, we've uh, had a party room meeting. The party room position is clear. The position is that we are uh, dis dismissing this. They were voting no. The party's position is to vote no. Uh, I think if, if that is to be Simon's position, then I really do think this makes uh, his position as opposition leader in the Senate and a front bench are fairly untenable. So I, I, I think we have to be realistic about that. We're, we're on this team uh, and that's particularly the case the Convention would hold for front benches. So I think that's troublesome. So you're saying it's untenable for Simon Birmingham to keep, keep that position in the Senate as leader and that position on policy. Has he, does he have time to fix it? Can he say, I will get out there and spruik the no case, I, I that's my he, job? I think he absolutely can. Uh, I just I don't, don't see from that that there's any particular uh, ambition to do so. So I, I am troubled by that. We've got to push this case. It's critical uh, to, uh, to our next two years. Uh, I think we're, we're going to win it. I think that no case is going to be successful, but we need all hands on deck. Should Peter Dutton... Sack Simon oh, look, from I, that I, position? I, I don't want to get into what, what Peter should do. It's, this is really a matter for Simon. But you're clearly saying that position, as articulated this afternoon to Kieran Gilbert, is untenable for the Senate leader. I believe it is. All right, I want to move on to some other issues now, particularly your fight against wokeness. Uh, I'll introduce it with a little video I showed last week. Have a look. Our obsession with so-called climate change is weakening our energy independence and strengthening China's. Perhaps that's the point. The reality is that our obsession with wokeness is making us weak and our enemies know it. We must cancel wokeness and start calling it out for what it is, a threat to our stability, our prosperity and our dignity. Wokeness equals weakness. I do love the slogan. I love a bit of alliteration, wokeness equals weakness. It's so true, especially when it comes to energy policy and how hurting our economy actually helps China. Yeah, it's, it's spot on. I shouldn't be laughing. I, those things started off being laughable. We've all spent the last 10 years or so laughing them off. But I think we are at that point now where they're no longer laughable. This is actually causing us harm. And climate policy, climate alarmism uh, is exactly that. We're seeing it now with our energy security, the cost of energy going up. And in the meantime, China are doing quite the opposite. They're turbocharging their coal-fired power. So uh, this is a problem now. All right, well, I'm not going to skip the obvious one here because I agree with just about everything you say on wokeness, but you, of course, say the voice is woke. I say it's something different and practical, but you reckon it's woke. A lot of our viewers will agree. Let's have a look at this part of the video. <laughs> Sections of our community have become obsessed with policies that weaken and divide us. As an example, the voice to parliament is yet another indulgence in the identity politics, critical race theory, social engineering agenda, which promotes victimhood. Well, there you go. As you know, I support The Voice, but uh, that's a view a lot of people agree with. They think it's come into this woke agenda. I've got to say, it, it first became an idea a dozen years ago before we had this woke push, but there's no doubt it's landed right into this era of identity politics and wokeness. It's yeah. probably going to hurt 
the yes case, as you would say. Yeah, look, look I think so. And, like, I stand by that. I, I've, I've been a long-time uh, detractor of the concept of the voice uh, probably for the last 12 months. I've been publicly saying that. So, uh, look, I, I, do, I do think that. And, uh, look, I, I, I think ultimately, um, you know, we, we've got to get serious about uh, the issues that are really out there. We're talking about cost of living, mortgages and energy prices. These are the things Aussies want to hear about. Spot on. Thanks for joining us, Alex. Thanks, really Bruce. appreciate it. Alex Antic there, Liberal Senator for South Australia.